Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we'll examine how retailers are winning by developing an informed relationship with their customers, better understanding what their customers want, and using data and analytics to deliver increased sales. In this episode, we explore essential strategies for retailers to harness the power of data and analytics. We'll guide you through the tools and techniques that enable a deep understanding of your customers' preferences and behaviors. We'll learn how to optimize everything from back-end operations to logistics and supply chain management. We'll be maximizing efficiency and enhancing customer satisfaction. We're also going to dive into how retailers use data analytics to map the customer journey from initial awareness through post-purchase interactions, identifying pain points, optimizing touch points, and enhancing overall customer satisfaction. Now, before we get started, don't forget to check the description below for information and news about what's coming up from the Retail Cloud Alliance. Now, let's dive in. Retailers collect and integrate data from a variety of touch points, especially among digital brands and some of the more mature brands. They do it in kind of a directionally consistent way. So anything from seeing your digital ad to clicking into it on your site, adding it to a cart, checking out, and then even returning the item. All of these are you know, the obvious areas where on the back end, there should be some tagging or moving or changing of the customer record to indicate this is what the customer is doing and when they're doing it and where they're doing it. There's four different types of data, the zero party data, first party data, second party data, and third party data. The main difference is zero party data is when customers will submit feedback or they're doing it because they want to do it. And then it could be a survey, but it's them giving the data. Second party would be when you're sharing your data between a large CPG and a retailer, for example. And then lastly, third party data, it really comes from buying data from others, such as demographics and things like that. How do they consolidate or integrate the data? Over the last 10, 20 years, you see a lot more things such as data leaks coming out or data marts. And that's really led to, I think, where we are today, which is a lot of companies are using data warehouses. Basically, a data warehouse collects the data from all different sources, external or internal. And the idea is that that data is then scrubbed slash cleaned before it can be used for consumer insights. So the way to better understand the broader picture and, and better collect brings us to this notion of unstructured data. Data didn't have to be in columns. We could sort of scrape data, find information in many unstructured places. This could be video, it could be audio, it could be maps. We are now at the era of, as we're moving away from CRM to CDP, we're also in the era where we've pretty much moved away from structured to what we call unstructured data, which means we can collect information in ways that is not nearly as tidy as we had to just a couple of years ago. As retailers navigate the complexity of omni-channel interactions, I would say it's important to consolidate their customer data into a single centralized repository. This will allow the organization to access, analyze, and make decisions from the same sources of data. And it's often the job of data science team or BI teams. But increasingly, we want the broader organization of all of the different domains in customer experience, in marketing, in supply chain, and execution teams to be able to utilize the same common data set. And we're also seeing an increased investment in areas of data management, particularly in the cloud-based data management tools that can really help retailers solve this challenge. And last but not least, I would say the adoption of AI is also helping retailers to really streamline the mapping and synchronization and management of a lot of the large diverse data sets that are both structured data as well as unstructured data you will have to understand what a customer does outside the retailer. For example, you could be a customer of Walmart, but if you have interactions with Target, Amazon, Walgreens, CVS, all of these would not be necessarily available to Walmart. So it is very hard to know what the transactions are, what the interactions are, and so on. So retailers would have to see if they can tap into some unconventional data. So one of the ways in which retailers started doing some kind of analysis is 
using large language models, as you know, like Chat GPT or GPT-4, and now more recently Gemini, Google's Gemini, Facebook's Llama, and so on. And sometimes you can use that in conjunction with your own data to see if it can give you a prediction or projection of what the missing part of the 360-degree view of the customer might look like. My definition of omnichannel unified commerce, name your buzzword, is really the definition of an experience that is both what I call flexible and connected. Flexible meaning that every touch point along the way can accommodate a customer at any point in their journey, whether they're browsing, they're buying or returning. And then connected meaning if that particular touch point is not best suited for that part of their journey. So think about like if you have a catalog and you want to return something, that becomes a challenge. That touch point needs to be connected in such a way that it can redirect the customer in a seamless way to another touch point to help facilitate that part of the journey. The bigger unlock is you need to be able to equip your employees, whether they're in store or remote, to be able to access that data and update that data with zero party data, as an example, and know how to use the systems and the insights from those systems to help shepherd the customer along their journey. The new era of collecting data, better understanding the customer is pretty much at the core of what we've been say, calling omni-channel for a few years now and understanding these different sort of paths to purchase and how we move from physical to digital. And there's no clear cut answer. One of the big challenges we've had recently is the end of cookies, especially in certain environments. So tracking customer behavior in some environments is becoming trickier. But uh, research is showing so far that we're actually getting better at it with platforms anyways, like Meta, just to name that one. They have a solution called Robin, which is quite good at sort of tracking the online, offline behaviors of its users. Back to the big platforms, uh, fortunately or unfortunately again, but uh, it's really just sort of finding new ways of, of correlating, attributing certain behaviors without necessarily knowing that it's Carl that's shopping around, but a person like Carl. And that sort of gives us a rich enough data to be able to follow that customer and serve them, hopefully, for doing our jobs right, the right product at the right price at the right time for the right reasons. The use of big data analytics and customer journey mapping gives retailers a new level of precision and deeper insight that did not exist before. For example, we can now better understand customer cohorts not only across demographic and persona levels, but also across location and device and social media associations. Instead of just saying, hey, we know this is a 25-year-old Jane Doe who is a fashionista, now we can tell it's a 25-year-old fa fashionista Jane Doe who's active on Instagram and loves to travel and lives by the beach. So we know so much more about these consumers. And this deeper level of understanding will enable retailers to create a more relevant shopping experience for that consumer, from advertising messages to promotions, to even more relevant assortment pricing, as well as better inventory availability and fulfillment options. So this way, no matter where, when, and how an omni-channel customer decides to interact with the retailer, he or she will always get a good experience. Are you focused on the journey or the individual interactions? What I mean by that is the loyalty of that customer's always thinking of retail or ABC when they want to shop for groceries or whatever it may be. Or is it about satisfying the customer at the moment? So when they're at the register or in the store, they might get a notification about a coupon and some promotion. So there's two different ways to look at it because the overall customer journey is long-term and it's about building brand loyalty. And I think the immediate interaction is key to driving sales at that moment. There's a lot of great data about what's happened in the past but really, analytics is now trying to figure out how to unlock that for the future. Well, now you can verify demographics and customer shopping patterns and what they actually buy to narrow it down so you have a more accurate audience in terms of you know what their needs are. So I think one of the ways in which big data analytics is very helpful is to create, design a good loyalty program and constantly engage the customers through the program by 
making the right offers, uh, personalized messages, appreciations, thank yous to the customer. And so that the customer feels like, you know, this is a company that really cares for me. And I'd like to be not only a loyal customer, but I also want to be an advocate for this retailer. So I think that's how this can be mapped, but it will take a lot of efforts on the part of retailers to be able to pull this off. I have to say that the Briley Institute of Customer Engagement, for which I'm an academic director at the Southern Methodist University, we are engaged in doing that. And uh, we reach out to retailers and we are in a position to contribute to their learning through research that we can perform with their data. And uh, we're also continuously researching more and more ways in which these different aspects can be connected to realize this overall goal of superior customer satisfaction or delight, if you will, and then loyalty. In our next episode, as part of the Modern Retail Experience, we'll be showcasing how cloud-based training tools and AI-powered systems are improving employee training and productivity in retail stores. To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so you're the first in line to watch the latest episodes. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon, and we'll see you next time for more Data Drivers.